So I'm going to be beginning to work on like creating the wheels for this this robot for some movement. And first thing is I have a block here that is not um, a component. So remember that you want to create components, especially with the wheels, especially if you're going to do um, locations and things like that. Before I do that, I'm going to use the pencil command and create some points on this for the wheels are going to go. I'll type in just a one. I'm using a pencil mark here and push escape and type in one enter on this side to create um, just these marks for reference of where the wheels are going to go. Next is I'm going to create, I'm going to make this a component because I don't want this to stick. Let me try that again. Sometimes it doesn't always do that. Okay, there it is. My component. Call this uh, base one. All right. And now I have a component here and so the wheels aren't going to stick to it. Okay, that's very important. Next is I'm going to create a um, the wheel uh, on this point. And I'm going to go with a, um, let's go like the 1.5 radius wheel. There it is. And again, remember that if I if I didn't have a component here, this would be stuck to it. It'd be a big mess. Okay, when you probably extrude it all. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this out now. Probably like one inch. There it is. This is my first wheel. And I'm going to begin to create a little bit of detail as well. I'm going to say, well, if I want to go from the center here and come out and actually kind of make a kind of a rim or something that goes in, I don't want to go all the way, but like to there, and then I'll stop with that. Okay. Um, that's fine. Next is I'm going to create a, um, let's do this. I'm going to create a, wait, I'm going to wait on the components. So I'm still working on this. So, okay. So I have a problem. So can everybody hear me? Can you guys hear me? Please listen for a minute. If I cannot see through something, it's hard to, to link to reference points. So how do I do that then? I want to make it see through. Okay. So here's how I do that. I'm going to go to view and toolbars, okay? And I have some options for toolbars. Let me bring up a couple more toolbars. Down below, I'm gonna turn on styles and views, okay? And these are both significant, I think, um, just in the way that you can use them, okay? So styles and views, I'm putting me in my bar here. I'm gonna close this now, and that's in view toolbars and turn on styles and views, okay? So now I have a, um, what I have is some options. These are my, um, this is the views toolbar. I'm bringing it down so I can see what the name is. Um, this is isometric here. So a quick way to isometric. This is top view. This is front view and right view. Okay. So a quick way to see the views. And I like that. So I can just kind of move things around. This one here is for different styles. And you can you can do like a, a line here or um, I'm going to turn that back on to here. There it is. I can also do something called x-ray. Okay. X-ray allows me to see through the object and select points that were before not visible, okay? So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say I want to create a reference line in the middle of this. I can now find the endpoint on that line there and come out in the green, and I'll come out like one in the green to create that reference line in my cylinder like you guys are used to doing, okay? And now that works. If I turn off X-ray, Oh, I'm seeing the, the reference line there, okay? And that's that's a great way to do it. So using X-ray is very helpful to see what's behind it. I'm going to grab this and make it into a component now. And it didn't select the back part because it's already a component. I'll call this wheel one. Okay, that's set. And now I'm going to start copying this around, okay? So now that it's wheel one, I can go back to X-ray and I can choose this wheel and move it over from that back point. Okay, push the control key and bring it to that point right there. I can get it on that point. There it is. Okay, and that one's done. All right, I want to turn x-ray off so that's in position. And remember that when you have something that has symmetry, I'm not going to go around and I'll need to flip these over, right? So I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to edit this block and it's four inches across. Let me show you that. It is four inches here. Okay, so I'm going to move this side in two inches. Let's tap in a two. So from that position, I'm just moving my mouse, tap in a two, enter, and it brings it over two. So I'm modifying that block um, so that it's in position now. Okay, and the reason I'm doing that is because I want to copy this whole thing 
and then flip it and bring it back together. Okay, because I don't want to do this twice. So now I'm gonna um, I'm gonna grab everything here, and I'm gonna move it over. Like let's say from that point right there, I'll move it in the green, push the control key to copy it, and just click it again, and make sure it stays in the green look direction. Now I'm going to um, right click on this. I go flip along. Remember that you flip along a the a, the axis you want to flip it around. So like if I'm moving in the green, can everybody see this? I'm moving in the green this way. Um, I'm going to flip it, kind of flip it over in that same line. So flip it along the green, flips it like that. Okay. So it just rotates it around, and I'm just going to go like this and move it back from a point to a point. From this point to that point, it locks in. And basically, I'm, I'm good, okay? And I can erase these lines later and let it heal. Um, but now, if you notice that when I'm, if I double click on this wheel and add a detail like this, for example, let's say I have a hole there for some reason, I don't know why, but I have like a little detail like that. Now all the wheels, obviously, because they're all the same component, have that detail, okay? And so it's it's a, kind of a simple idea, but again, the idea is like, don't do things more than you have to. Be smart in your designing. Use the tools you have. Save time. Be efficient. And when you do that, um, if you can describe that process in your slides, even people see that as a higher level 3D modeling. And so you're trying to you're trying to you're trying to, it's almost like a resume. Okay, a resume points out all of your good points. And you want to describe how you're designing this and thinking through and using the tools wisely and efficiently. Uh, remember, like I said, why do you have that line there? Well, that line right there is just a reference line. So tell people about it if you need to, okay? Tell them what you're doing and explain it if you can. All right? So that's basically like having wheels, moving them around, modifying them, flipping them over, okay? You like if I mentioned this before about the follow me tool, okay? Remember the follow me tool is like if you, you just need a path and a profile for the follow me tool. So for example, um, I'm going to create my profile first. I'm going to create a, a line from the from the floor here up a little bit in the blue. And I'm going to use a circle here. I'm turning it around like this because I want the circle to be in the green. Notice that if I'm like this, it won't turn green. But if I'm like looking more at the horizon, just a reminder, I get it in the green. There's my circle. That's the profile. This is the shape. I'm going to delete these little lines here because they're, because they're in the way. This is the shape I want to use to extrude along a line. Okay, And now I can use the line command and go from the center of this profile in the green, like this maybe. And let's see, I'm going to go like this. I don't know where it's going really, but for right now. And I'll go like here in the green again. Okay. Um, and that's that's going to be the direction of movement or travel of my line. And I can even go like this and say, well, I'm going to use a um, an arc here and, and change that so that it has an arc. Okay. And I can go like this and click and push through those two. And it's going to go like that and then turn. Okay. And I'm going to do that again on this one over here because I like to have a smooth transition. And I move it until it like turns purple or blue, so it's tangent to the edge. You see that when I move this arc over, and it says tangent, that means it's a smooth intersection between a line and the arc. Tangencies create a smooth intersection and create smoothness in your designs. Okay, so I'm going to go to the to the purple there, right there, and I'm going to erase that back edge. Okay, so I have a path and I have a profile. That's all I need. And now I'm going to choose the path first. Um, sometimes I may need to grab everything. I want you to notice that there's two ways to select in boxes. Listen carefully, please. When I go with a right hand box, it selects whatever from if I click click and drag from like left to right, it chooses what's ever inside the box. Can you guys hear me? This is super important. It shows whatever's inside the box, okay? If I choose if I go from right to left, it's a different kind of a box. Have you guys noticed that? And it chooses whatever it touches. Okay, let me repeat that because that's very important. A box, if I click and put a, create a box from left to right, it chooses whatever's inside the box. If I go from right to left, it's a different kind of a box. It's a dash line box. And now whatever it touches, including, including this first line, it selects it. 
Okay, very important. So I chose my path first. I'm going to choose the follow me tool. And now the question that says, down below it says select face to extrude. I'm going to click on this face and it creates the tube like that. Okay, and that's, that's pretty powerful, but it's simply just following whatever line you create. Okay, and if this blue, I can right click on this and say reverse faces and it'll turn white because the blue is like the inside and, the, and, the, and sometimes it just flips it like that. Let me go like this. I'm going to grab the entire thing and then right click and say reverse faces and it didn't do it. Okay, cool. I'm going to reverse like this. So um, that's the way there. Okay, so now I have a, a white tube. Any questions about that or any of that need to be repeated? Anybody? Are we good? Okay, cool. Um, okay, what about spheres? Okay, let's talk about a sphere. I'm going to use the, the um, follow me tool again. Okay, so watch. A sphere is simply <coughs> a circle or profile that's been flipped around 360 degrees. Okay, that's the idea. So I'm going to create a path down below like this. There's my path. In fact, I'm going to click on this and delete the interior so you just see that's just a path, okay? And now I'm going to create the profile. I'm going from the very center of this path up to here. I'm going to create a circle in the green like this, and it doesn't matter what the radius is, it can be different from the path. <clears throat> I'm going to delete this line and this line. And now let me let me explain what I'm doing. <coughs> I'm creating a path and a profile. The profile is going to follow the direction of the path. So if I have a 360 degree profile, I'm sorry, path down below, it's going to spin this profile 360 and create the sphere. Are you guys with me for this moment? Yes? Okay, watch this. Click on the path first, choose follow me, and then click on the profile and I have my sphere. Not bad, right? <laughs> no charge for that today, okay? Um, maybe you should Try again. <laughs> sure, no problem. So remember that I had a, um, a circle on the bottom? And then it's important that you find the very center of that circle. Come up in the blue so it's right above it. And that means that the path has to be directly below the profile. Now I'm going to create the profile looking across like this in the green, or I can do it in the red. It doesn't matter as long as it's in a color. So it's like right above it. So it doesn't matter where it is as long as it's vertically, it's perpendicular to the path down below it and it's right above the center of the path. And I'm just going to click on the path first to choose the path and I'm going to push follow me. And now the profile is going to just, it's not going anywhere like, like the one we did before. It's just going to spin the 360 because that's the path down below and it creates the sphere. Okay. And because it's blue, I'm going to right click and say reverse faces and I have my white sphere and I'm ready to go. Okay? Any questions about that? Okay, so very easy way to make a sphere. Okay, so what if I want to make like an indentation in the sphere? I'm going to do like the Star Wars, you know, uh, the old, the, the initial moon or whatever, right? So I forget the name of it. But if I select the sphere and I'm going to use the move command and push control key so I have now two spheres, okay? There it is. And now I'm going to move it back into this one, like that. Okay, is there a way to use one solid or one model to cut out the other one? And the answer is yes. Okay, so watch this, please. This is a this is called um, a solids difference in 3D modeling. I have one. When you bring in a curved surface to another surface like this, the problem is that it doesn't it doesn't create an edge right there. Okay. And if you, you need an edge to be able to make changes, like if you bring in two squares together, I can it'll create an edge, I can delete one. So if I have it like this, if I just delete this now, nothing happens. Okay? But if I click on this one or right click, watch this for just a minute. All right, I'm gonna right click in the sphere and go to intersect faces with model. So watch what happens now. I'm right clicking intersect faces with model. It creates an edge there that I can work with now. When I click on this, and push delete on the keyboard, now it creates a line, okay? If I click on this again and push delete, and push, I'm just going to reverse faces, it's actually created a surface from that intersection. Does everybody see that? Um, who wants to see that? Another part of this is like, if I take this one and I move it, um, let's say I want to move this over to here, 
Mm, let me let try this. Above this one. And into here. Okay, there it is. If I want to use like the same idea, this is selected now. I'm going to right click and go intersect faces with model. It, it creates that cut right there. I'm going to delete my sphere. Or I could delete the tube, doesn't matter. And I'll delete this and I have the cutout that I wanted. Okay? And sometimes you use that to like set things in it or you want to put a ball like in something. I don't know how you'd use that, but just another technique to use kind of in your toolbox.